Alright, so I did some scrounging around. And for that capacitor, that 0 0.022 microfarad cap. And found one actually. And I have a 2N4401 to replace that um, NPN that was shorted out in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in to the um, components place. And back to the schematic again, this is going to be, uh, camera zoomed in, zoom out. This is Q2704 we're replacing, and capacitor C2703, which is in parallel with this uh, Zener, this 9.1 volt Zener diode over here. So we're going to go ahead and throw that back in. Um, I hope the voltage rating <laughs> is okay, but there's not really any high voltage over here. Um, we're running at a 15 volt rail, 10.7 volts at the base, so base to emitter voltage about 0.7 volts, so should be at like somewhere around 11 and a half volts roughly here, and or I'm sorry, about 10 volts here base the emitter um, and then well we're at a negative 7.5 volt rail down here we expect about 0.6 volt drop here so I think this capacitor will be just fine if not I guess we'll find out I've already prepped the um, prepped the pads so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop these components in and solder them. in this one lead because I couldn't get the solder out of this one via oops the phone just fell I'm using my phone here Soldering is such a pain if you don't clean up the site first. Okay, so that one's in. I'm using uh, a Custer 6040 solder. Good stuff. It's good to clean up the site after you solder. Because the rosin flux can corrode.
Now the base is the tricky part. I'm gonna do a little trick and just bend, bend this over. Give us some better access to it. That should be it. Just do a quick check here. I didn't have an ac I didn't have a uh, an axial capacitor. I just had a radial tantalum, but it should do just fine. Everything's connected. That's the uh, bipolar I replaced. And there's the capacitor right there. Well, there's only one thing to find out if it works, and that's to power it up. Oh, I just dropped get the get these solder remnants out of there. All right, let's power this up. Let's plug this in. We go. Well, look at that. It's fixed. We could probably turn the grid bias down a little bit. Read out. Hard to tell if the readout. Oh, yeah. This is good. Well, I'd say that's a successful fix, and a big thumbs up to David again from the Yahoo TechScopes forum. Um, he was a great help in providing some insight to the schematics and how the biasing should be. And again, watch that first video if you haven't already, um, because that really shows the beef of everything. And yeah, till next time.